Hello again guys and welcome back to the channel. A little over six months ago we moved into our current home and one of the last things that I did before moving out of the previous house was I sold off the majority of the office furniture that I had. Desks, a lot of the shelves and shelving units and things. Any place that would potentially be usable as a desk. Now as I mentioned we've been in this house for a few months now and I haven't actually purchased anything new. The only thing that I've had to work on when I'm working from home, which is rare, is my treadmill desk, my lifespan treadmill desk. Great desk, it's actually an upgrade to the one that I made a video about a few years ago. Absolutely love that thing, but that's not what this video is about. That has become incredibly cramped and cluttered and I needed something else to work on and luckily the people from FlexiSpot reached out and gave me another opportunity. They offered to send out their standing desk, which is actually very reasonably priced. I'd been looking at furniture at Ikea and an Ikea standing desk retails for about $400, a little bit less than that. And the Ikea one is very, very limited. Whereas this one starts at $400, comes in a few different sizes, a few different colors. Specifically, you can get maple, black, and mahogany in the tops, although maple is only available in like the smallest size. And you can get the legs in either black, white, or gray, or silver. When they asked me if I wanted to check it out, I definitely said yes, and they sent it to me for free for review, so thanks to that. And I asked them to send me out the black tabletop with the black legs, because I figured just matte black everything. The size on it is very reasonable. They go from as small as, like I said, 48 by 30 inches up to 60 by 30 inches for an additional fee. The one that they sent me was 55 inches by 30 inches, which is a very respectable size. And this is not just a standing desk, this is a full convertible desk. So it can go from a seated position all the way up to a standing position to a, for someone like myself who's not terribly tall, to a very high position. And in addition to just being able to pick out your work surface and the legs, there are a bunch of other options such as you can put an under desk bike under it, you can get a monitor stand for multi-monitors, an anti-fatigue mat, which actually they sent me one of those as well. You can get a CPU holder if you have a large tower or something, and you can even get a keyboard tray for it if you want to have a keyboard tray under it. Taking a look at the quick unboxing here, because I didn't capture all of it, it came in three boxes. Now the first box, as I mentioned, they sent the anti-fatigue mat. It's 39 inches wide, 20 inches deep, about three quarters of an inch thick, which after standing on it for a little while, it's very comfortable. I've had other anti-fatigue mats in the past, and this one is just as good as those were. The second box, it had paperwork, it had the instructions, it had a bag of all the labeled hardware and stuff to put everything together with, had the seven button digital display as well as the power cable, and of course the whole rest of the assembly. The legs, the brackets, the, the transmission rod that moves the desk up and down. Then the third box is actually the tabletop itself. It is the 55 by 30 inch tabletop one inch thick tabletop. And then moving on to the assembly process. This is the thing that's always going to be kind of hit or miss for a lot of people because it comes in a bunch of boxes and you gotta put it together. This was very straightforward. I, I put the majority of it together by myself in about 20 to 25 minutes. You just set up the legs, you attach them to each other with a crossbar, you put the transmission rod. I, I'm gonna keep calling it that. It's the thing that makes the desk move up and down. Put that in place, make sure you've got it at the correct width to match up with the holes on the top side of the desk. Then once you've got it all together and screwed down and everything and lined up with the holes on the desk. You screw everything together and you attach the control panel to the bottom. There's a little box with a couple of wires and you wire everything all together. It was decently straightforward, but I did end up bringing my dad in for the last part because mine was a little bit different than someone else's would be. Mine, it didn't line up quite perfectly. The holes were a little farther out than the desk was able to go with the included transmission rod. They've assured me that if you were to order one of these, they will match them up perfectly so it won't be like mine was. But my dad and I, we had to drill, I think, eight holes holes, just tiny little pilot holes, and it was not a huge deal. I'm not great when it comes to measuring things. After getting it all assembled though, I mean the total time, 20 to 25 minutes of me putting the legs together, probably 20 minutes of me and my dad hoeing and humming and hmm, trying to get all the measurements exactly correct, drilling all the holes, putting everything in the right places, figuring out that we did it all backwards and redoing it. Anyway, it was decently easy to do. I was able to do it so most people can probably do it. In terms of the usage, it's, it's fairly straightforward. There's an up button, you push it and the desk moves up. There's a down button, you push it and the desk moves down. You hold one of those buttons and it goes up or down. If you want to save a position that you're currently at, you move it to that position, you press the M key and then the number. So M1 would save whatever position you're at into position one. So then whenever you hit one for moving forward, it would go back to that position. So I've got my M1 set to, I think, 28 and a half inches. And then I've got my M3 set to about 37 and a half inches, 38 inches, something like that. There's also an A button that is supposed to do a long time sitting reminder. 
haven't really messed around with that much yet, but if you're a type of person that does tend to sit down and forget that you're sitting and you want to switch between sitting and standing, that could definitely be a very useful, healthier option. I have been using this desk for probably a week and a half now. I will say it has been a wonderful change to be able to go from using that smaller lifespan treadmill desk to a much larger work surface. It's, it's felt a whole lot more freeing. Also to be able to sit down occasionally while I'm working on things instead of having to stand all the time because on the treadmill desk, had to stand up all the time. Now in terms of maybe some not so great things about it, what I think are missing or things that are not so great, the surface is definitely not fingerprint resistant it's not high gloss or anything, so it's not going to be as bad as like a touchscreen on a phone or a laptop or tablet, but it does show some fingerprints and some marks of when you move things around and when you touch it. Keep that in mind, maybe keep a rag around. But the one thing that I found it was really missing is cable management. So I've only got a couple of things plugged in on there right now. I've got my iMac primarily and a hard drive, but that immediately leaves me with two cables running down, and if the cables are not long enough to deal with the desk moving up and down, I'm in trouble. So what I'm going to end up doing, I've already gone ahead and ordered a cable management solution that you just attach to the bottom of the desk. Just like drilling the holes for the rest of it, it's going to be exactly the same. I'll drill four pilot holes, I'll attach the surface to the bottom of the desk, mount myself a power strip under there, and get all the cables routed through that. Not a huge deal at all. I also picked up some small clamps that I can run wires through. They're just going to stick to the bottom of the desk and the wire will run through it. The treadmill desk actually came with some of those, so I was kind of surprised to see that this desk didn't come with any sort of cable management option. I'm going to go ahead and take care of that myself. Not a huge deal. Looking back on it though, as I mentioned, I'd looked at the IKEA standing desk, the powered standing desk option, and the crank standing desk option. That one's significantly cheaper, but you have to crank the desk up and down. Not a fan. Between the IKEA, I think it's Bicant, and this desk, I'm definitely going to choose this desk, one, because it's already here, but two, the size difference. The IKEA desk is smaller. Well, okay, they're roughly the same size, but this one does have an option to go larger if you want a larger desk, which is great. The price, they're both very similar price. As I mentioned before, the IKEA desk only has up and down buttons. It doesn't have a save your position type button. So if you're moving back and forth between standing and sitting, you're gonna have to kind of eyeball it with the IKEA. Whereas with the FlexiSpot, you just hit a button and go back to exactly what you want every time. But on the other side, if you need a desk that goes a little bit lower, the IKEA desk actually goes down to 22 inches where the flexi spot only goes down to 28. For most desk chairs, 28 is going to be more than enough. I've never taken it below 28 and a half, and that's comfortable height for me, so that's perfect. And I think that's where I'm going to wrap the video up, actually. I, like I said, this desk has been great for me, being able to go back and forth between sitting and standing and whatever's comfortable at the time. I can always slide that standing mat out and just get up on that and get to work. It's a large enough work surface for me to get a lot of stuff done and have at least two monitors up there. So I am definitely a big fan, and I'm going to go ahead and put a link to where you can find this down in the video description. Definitely a link to their website, also one to Amazon or wherever else they happen to have them for sale if they're available there. Can't resist putting that little affiliate link in there if possible. If you like this video, definitely make sure to leave a thumbs up down below. Subscribe to the channel if you have not already and you want to get notified whenever I put out new videos. And if you actually want to get the notifications, there's a, a bell that you can ring. It'll send you emails or messages on your phone or whatever you opt in for. But thank you as always for watching the videos, for supporting the channel, and I'll see you again next time.